Welcome back to Statistics on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, I'm going to show you first the theory behind a dependent or paired student's t-test, and then we're going to go to the Excel file, and I'm actually going to show you how to compute those. Okay? So the dependent t-test is basically the opposite of the independent t-test. When we looked at independent in the previous video, we had to have two different groups, and we were measuring the same variable on both of them. Okay? The paired or dependent student's t-test is the opposite of that. Instead, in simplistic terms, we only have one group, but we're measuring two different things on them, two different things. So two variables we're measuring on one group. Now, the easiest way to really identify whether or not you've, you're going to use a paired t-test is if you can pick one subject one subject out of the entire group that you're testing. So let's say you've got 50 subjects, just pick one of them. It doesn't matter which one. You just imagine there's this one person, one person or one mouse, whatever you're doing it on. And you ask yourself, am I measuring two different things on that one person? And if your answer is yes, it's most likely a student, a, a paired student's t-test, okay? So in technical terms, you're gonna have one group and you can think of it mentally as one subject, and you're going to have two dependent continuous variables. And I, again, have those dependent continuous variables bolded in these examples, um, and you're going to be measuring both of those variables on one subject. So here are examples where you might use a paired t-test. All right, suppose you're having um, a resistance exercise training program. You want to measure the maximum they can lift on the military press, which would be called the military press one repetition maximum before the program and after. So you're measuring two things on each person. You're measuring their amount they can lift before the program and then the amount they can lift after the program. And I would suppose you would expect it to increase, right? But two different things on one person. Here's another example. You measure blood glucose before and after consuming a meal for a group of individuals. So you got one group, just pick one person from that, and you're measuring two things. You're measuring their blood glucose before the meal and blood glucose after the meal. And I would probably expect the blood glucose to go up, right? That's beside the point, but you're measuring two things on one person. For the last one, let's compare quadricep femori muscle activity and hamstrings muscle activity in a group of individuals. So for every person, and I've actually done this test in a biomechanics lab that I teach. We actually did this last week. Um, I'm measuring two things on every person. I measure their quadricep activity and their hamstring activity. Two variables being measured on one person or each person in the group. Okay, now here's the stipulation on a dependent t-test that you don't have on an independent. When you do an independent, which we saw in the previous video, generally you arrange the, the two variables in columns. So let me just real quick switch to like this. So this is actually for the independent t-test. See, I have two columns right here, and each of these columns um, has a number of values, but in an independent t-test, they do not have to be the same number of values. However, when you run a dependent or paired t-test, you notice in my paired example, which we'll go to in a couple minutes, these actually have to have the same number of values. If I added an extra value here, let's say I put a nine there, then they would be unequal. And if you tried to run a paired t-test, it would come back with an error. You cannot do that. In a paired t-test, you have to have the same number of values. To understand this, remember that you're measuring two variables on each person. So every person has the same number of measurements. So if, if you have 10 people, you're going to have 20 measurements, 10 in each group or each column. So another way to think about the dependent t-test is it's also easy to pick out if we have a before and after or a pre and post. That's another giveaway that it's dependent. So for example, we've got here's a before and after, um, blood glucose before a meal and after the meal. Here's another one, um, your pre-training regimen one rep maximum, and then how much you can lift after the training regimen, okay? So before and after, pre and post, if you had a weight loss program and you were measuring weight before the intervention and then after, 
you would compare those with a dependent t-test because every person is going to have two measurements, one before, one after, or one pre and one post. Now, because you only have one group of individuals, every measurement is done on the same population. It's just the people in that group, right? You don't have two different groups. Like in the independent case, we could have had a diabetic and a non-diabetic group. Those are very different groups. In the paired test, you only have one group. So there can't be any variation between groups because there's only one group. So the F test that we used in the independent t-test is not necessary and irrelevant in a paired t-test. And there is only one paired t-test. So when you go in Excel to do this, there is no F test to run. You just simply pick the only dependent t-test that they offer and you just run that. There's only one population, so there's no variances between multiple populations because there's only one of them. Okay, so to put it simply, generally speaking, for a dependent or paired t-test, you can have one group and you're measuring two variables on every single person in that group. Okay, so now that we've talked a little bit about the theory behind why you would use a paired t-test, let's now go to the Excel file and I'll actually show you how to do it. So again, I'll preface this by saying that, again, I use the Mac version of this. The Windows version will differ ever so slightly, but it's basically the same. And then if you have not already downloaded the data analysis tool pack, either download it or go to the video, which I have linked in the description, and watch how to actually download that data analysis tool pack because you will need it for everything we do here. All right, so in this video, like I said, I'm going to show you how to do a dependent or paired t-test. Now, unlike the independent t-test, where we had two possible uh, circumstances, equal, either assuming equal variances or assuming unequal variances, there's only one paired t-test that we have to worry about. So this is actually fairly simple. Um, wherever I start, I'm going to go click on data. It should be up here at the top somewhere. And then I'm going to click on data analysis, assuming I have that tool pack installed. You can see there's only one t-test that's for paired, so that's obviously the one I'm going to click on. So paired to sample for means. Click on this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this. I'm going to put my first variable range. I'm going to drag 13 down to 9. Get rid of this. My second variable range, let me drag 5 down to 10. Again, I explained this in the previous video, but our hypothesized mean difference, unless you have some other reason not to put zero, you're just gonna put zero. This is basically your null hypothesis. And generally speaking, the null hypothesis says, for the most part, that there's no difference between groups. So the null hypothesis here would say the before group, there's no difference between that and the after group, no difference. And no difference means a zero difference. There's no difference, they're the same. So I put a zero here. Here's my confidence level, or the alpha. This implies a confidence level of 95%. So that's generally what most people use. So you'll just keep this alpha value of 0.05 there unless you have reason to do otherwise. Let me select a good output range. So this is where I want the data to start appearing. So why don't I just do right there? And then I just hit OK. And there is my complete paired t-test analysis. Now again, some of the important things here that you might want to report if you're doing this in some kind of article or paper. Again, the mean and the variance. Now you would not directly report the variance, but you could calculate the standard deviation from these by taking the square root. Um, so this, the standard deviation of this first one, I would just say is gonna be a little bit over four because the square root of 16 is four, but you can calculate those because we would report the mean plus or minus the standard deviation of each group. Um, notice also, while this isn't something you would necessarily report, notice in paired t-tests you have the same number of values in the first group as the second. That is a requirement. If you had an extra value right here and tried to do a dependent t-test, it would not work. You have to have the same number of values. So if you run a dependent t-test and one of the groups has one more value or, or just a different number of values than the other, that will cause an error when you do the t-test. And if you get an error, that's one thing you need to check to make sure you didn't actually accidentally delete some value or you made a mistake somewhere. Anyways, 
Another important thing, here's our p-value for our one-tailed test. Here's our p-value for our two-tailed test. Um, generally speaking, our p-value for the two-tailed test is the more conservative p-value. And no one is ever going to say you're wrong or you can't use the two-tailed one. Usually they say, when in doubt, use the two-tailed. You only use the one-tailed under certain circumstances, and that's when you know with pretty much 100% certainty, or you're expecting one of these groups to be bigger than the other. Okay, so for example, if I expected the before group to be larger than the after group based on available data and information that I knew, if I expected that, then I would probably go with the one-tailed p-value, assuming that that group before actually was higher. Okay. And then some people might actually report the t-statistic. Um, that's just a preference, but you at the very least have to report the mean plus or minus standard deviation, p-values, and the confidence level, which in this case was 95%. All right, so there's not much more to the dependent t-test. The independent is the more complicated one where if you want to be rigorously correct, you also have to run an f-test. This one, there is just one t-test for paired, and that's it. So. Hopefully this helped. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.